Okay, now today we'll talk about Romans 5, uh, no, I'm sorry, Romans 8, 31. Romans 8, 31 and 32. If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him for us all, how shall we not with him also freely give us all things? Okay, now this passage is all about God's grace. Now, I have told you before, if you mark your Bible, you can use three colors. Red for, uh, for God's grace is like the, uh, the color of the blood of Jesus. And then blue would be punishment. Now, let me see here. Okay. Blue would be punishment, warning. And green would be uh, what to obey. Now, here... Now here is the three. Green, grace would be what God does for us to bless us. And then the opposite is blue, is the warning if we don't obey God, that what will happen. And then green is also the law, the commandments, what we should do. Okay, now this passage that if God is for us, if God helps us, who can be against us? There can be no one who is against us. He who did not spare his own son, he did not spare his own son, but deliver him, Jesus Christ, up for us all, how shall he not also, uh, not with him also freely give us all things? He will give us all things together with him. This is a very wonderful passage. Interpretation of this passage. Uh, first, God is for us. He wants to help and bless us. So he, he, he is for us. He helps us. He blesses us. He blesses us and so no one can be against us because they cannot steal what God has prepared for us now this passage if God is for us who can be against us no one can steal anything from us if we love God and follow God nobody can steal anything from God God is for us God will bless us God will help us uh, what you know nobody can do anything to harm us if we obey him and and serve him and he did not spare his own son, but deliver him up for us all. He loves his son very much, but he has given us his son. That is, you know, the best that he has. He will also with him freely give us all things. So if he has given us the most wonderful gift, he will also give us all things, all the things we need, the food, a provision, the money we need, our family, our church, talents, ability, joy and peace and opportunities and rewards, all these things will be given to us. So God give us His Son so He will also give us all things together with Him. That means the whole world is for us. All the resources are for us to use when we follow God's will. So when we follow God's will, God will give us all resources. So the theme, I have here the message, how we can receive all things from God together with Jesus Christ. So together with Jesus Christ, how can we receive all things from Him? And then the A point is the intro that some people don't receive this. Many people don't believe that we receive all things together with Jesus and they have a mentality of poverty. There are many Christians who live in a uh, with the mentality of poverty, they see that um, uh, they don't have many blessings and they think God is mean, God doesn't want to bless them, and so they, they always uh, say, you know, we are poor, we are poor, we have nothing. So they don't believe that and then they don't receive it. But if we believe that and we trust in God and follow God, God's blessing will pour into our life. Okay, B, God's nature and grace. God is prosperous. He is very rich. He owns everything in the world. Everything in the world belongs to Him. When He gives us His Son, He also wants to give us all things together with Him. So together with Jesus, He will give us all things. He gives us peace and joy and strength and wisdom and provision, gift, opportunities, provision to go to a high level in our, li in our lives that we can go higher because He will provide for us. There is no limit on how much you will give us. 
the more we we'll obey Him, the more He can give us. So we can trust God for this. Yes, Lord, I want to follow you, obey you, and be faithful to you, and then you will be very happy, and you bless our whole life, and you raise us up to a higher, higher level. You raise us up to a very, very high level. So we can have faith in this, that yes, God will bless us greatly. God will bless us greatly because God has already given us His Son. He will give us all things. So, so this is to motivate people to see that He's a gracious God and we can share with them how God is gracious to us, huh? how God, God has blessed us. And let's see why many Christians are poor. They don't have faith in God. They don't have a good relationship with God. They don't have a close relationship with God. And it's more blessed to give than to receive. And many people don't give to God and don't give to others and they become poor. When God sees that we, are, we want to bless people, the more we give, the more we help people. The, the more is God happy with us and He'll bless us. He will give us strength, give us opportunities when we have the heart to bless people. Now I thank God that, that I have this heart to bless people, to help people unconditionally. And then God helped me to have this Global Fire Mission Ministries and then some people uh, donate to this and then we can help different uh, groups in Africa so that they can have the equipment to watch my, my training and also I can do training in Hong Kong and in different countries. So when we follow God and obey God, He's very happy. And then He will entrust more to us. He will entrust more gifts and provision to us. D, the reminder and warning from God. Some Christians don't trust in God for provision and some let Satan steal from them. Then they become poor even though God wants to bless their lives. So this is a warning. Now some people, they don't, take the gifts of God and they think, you know, they don't, um, they're not sincere to follow God. They don't take things of God seriously. And then what happens is, then they let Satan steal from them. For instance, I'm blessing the churches, uh, Global Fire Mission Ministries are helping different groups to buy equipment so that you can watch my training it's a free gift from God. Now some people treasure that very much and they do the assignments, they treasure and they learn from it and they benefit from it. But some groups, they're not serious about it. They don't take it seriously. They don't see that as a gift from God and they take advantage of it. And then what happens is they can lose more. So. Now, I say this not, not to pressure you, but to say that it's more blessed for you to, to take hold of what God has given you. That you say, God, I'm thankful, I'm thankful you've given us so much I want. I want to serve you, I want to love you, I want to obey you. The more we want to follow God and really treasure God's gifts, the more God will give to us. And E, how to have the abundance in Christ. Trust in the promise and provision of God. Trust in Him. And build up a strong relationship with God. And love and serve God. And God will give us things the human mind cannot imagine. That's 1 Corinthians 2, 9. That things eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, and the human mind cannot think of. And don't give Satan a foothold and don't let him steal from us. Okay, and then here I want to add something. The difference in biblical teaching from prosperity uh, theology about this teaching here because God will give us all things. What, so what's the difference between that, this and prosperity theology? Now let me explain what prosperity theology is that you might have noticed some preachers. They will say, okay, you give as much as you can and then you'll get the money back. So if you need some money, give now, give now, give a lot and then you will get a lot back. Um, so what, what they are saying is, if you want something from God, give a lot, and then you will receive 
many times. So when you want to get something, you have the goal of getting this gift from God, and then you want to give more. And then, uh, and then they also say that when a Christian is really faithful to God, then you by no means be poor. You will always be rich, and you'll be you'll be uh, uh, rich and have everything you need. Now I want to say that. Okay, what is the difference between that and what we teach from the Bible? Here is the difference. Biblical teaching is to put the priority in following God, that we follow God. God will reward us, but we don't set our eyes only on reward. We set our eyes on God. God is the one who is good. We don't just look at the good gifts of God. We don't just look at the gifts of God. We will look at God is good. So we treasure God and we want to follow God and obey God. And prosperity theology, they would put the priority in getting prosperity. So they want to give money in order to get wealth. So they always set the eyes on getting wealth and they think that all Christians should be rich. And any Christian who is not rich, they must have some problem in their life. Now the Typical definition of richness and the people's definition are different. People's definition is that you have a lot of money, you have house, or car, or every, uh, you know, uh, rich, richness in the world. But in the Bible, sometimes it's not like that. Like Paul, he was not rich physically. He was not rich physically. Uh, most of the time, he just traveled. He doesn't. He didn't even own a house most of the time uh, in his ministry. He, he just lived in other people's houses. So he's not rich physically, but he's rich spiritually. He has the joy of God. He has the blessing of God, the spiritual gifts and opportunities to bless many people. Uh, so these are the blessings promised by God. Now, God will provide for us so that we have enough so that we can serve God faithfully. God doesn't want us, the minister, to be poor that we don't have enough money to survive. God wants to provide for us, but we don't look for the wealth, okay? And the Bible teaches that Christians can suffer, that we can suffer too. Blessings from God does not always mean worldly prosperity. Blessings include joy, strength, gifts, ability to bless people, and reward. So the difference is that the priority is set in following God and also to get the spiritual strength from God and not necessarily the f physical blessings. Now, God will give us phys physical blessings enough for our life and for our ministry that the more we grow in God, the more He will provide for us so that we can serve God more. Okay, now, what I want to do now, I go back to this passage and... Um, I want to preach this to demonstrate how to preach it just from this passage. It's just looking by looking at this passage. How to describe God's goodness so that people would be attracted by God. Okay, if God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son but deliver him for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? So this passage tells us that God is a rich God. He has everything. He can give us all things. Everything is in his hand because he created the world. All the resources in the world are from him. He can give us all these resources. And the Bible tells us that for those who love him, he'll prepare for us things that eyes have not seen and ears have not heard and the human mind cannot think of. So for people who love God, God will prepare for them more blessings from God so that He can bless other people. The purpose is to bless other people. The purpose is not just to keep the blessing for Himself. The purpose is that He can give to more people. So God is prosperous. He wants to bless us. He wants more of His children to be prosperous. He wants to reach, uh, bless us richly so that we have the resource, have the strength and the spiritual gift to bless more people. Because when He gives us Jesus Christ, that is already 
the best that he has. He wants, he gave us the best of, of what he has. He will also give us all the other things together with him. So when we trust in him and obey him, then we can receive all this spiritual strength and spiritual qualities and spiritual gifts and, uh, and opportunities and everything we need so that our life will go higher and higher. And the more we submit to Him, the more we obey Him and glorify Him in everything we say, that God will prepare for us more and more. Also, there is a th verse 31. If God is for us, He helps us. So he, who can be against us? When He gives us all things together with Jesus, nobody can be against us because they are attacking God when they attack us. When they attack us, they are attacking God. And God will be after them and they will lose what they have. So it's foolish for people to attack Christians because Christians have the support of God. So if God is for us, nobody can be against us and they cannot steal anything from us. Even though from the outside, it looks like they can steal something, but they actually cannot steal anything from us. They cannot steal the wonderful plan of God. They cannot steal our rich, uh, richness in God. He cannot steal our spiritual gifts. He cannot steal our, our opportunities. We'll have all these things when we have Jesus Christ. So nobody can fight against us. Externally, they might be able to do something harm to harm us. But then God will still protect us so that we will not be uh, that our opportunities and our gifts and our uh, everything we have will not be stolen from us. So we can have all things. Okay, now, so this verse talk about how wonderful it, it is when we follow God and love God, then He give us all things together with Jesus. But some Christians will say, how come my life is so difficult? How come I have so many uh, problems? Now, we don't want to explain and say, well, because you don't obey God. I, you know, we cannot judge people. We just say the more we trust in God, the more we obey God, the more we put God in the first priority, the more we'll be blessed by God. We cannot say that all Christians who are suffering, who are poor, it means necessary that they are not loving God. It, we cannot say that. But there could be many reasons. But we just say, when we start to say, God, I trust in you only. I rely on you only. I want to serve you only. I want to love you and glorify you. I want to tell people about the goodness of God. I want to let people see how wonderful God is. And then God will be very happy with us and He will bless us greatly and He will pour His blessings upon us. So our life will go higher and higher. And also when we have this wisdom from God, when we love God, we'll have the wisdom from God. We'll say, Yes, everything is in the hand of God. And then we have the wisdom to handle difficult people. So I hope that we all will, um, will see that, wow, this is so wonderful. So how? How can we have these blessings from God? First, when we read the Bible, take it seriously. We remember these promises. God is for us, so nobody can be against us. He did not spare His own Son and deliver Him for us all. He will also give, him, get, give us all things together of Jesus. So He will give us all things. So I can trust in God's Word. I can trust in Him. And every day I can praise Him and worship Him and enjoy Him. Then I'll have more strength. Lord, I trust in You. I rely on You. I hold on to You. You are my strength. You are my help. Oh, you are my wonderful. You, everything you have is wonderful. So the more we trust in God, the more we rely on God, the more we, we, we receive this blessing. And then whenever we receive any blessings from God, we thank God for it and we treasure it. Like when you receive the equipment, you say, I thank God for that. I want to make the best use of the equipment. I want to bless people. I want to help people. And then God is very happy with us. And then our life will go higher and higher. So I hope that you see how we can use a uh, any Bible passage to, um, to explain about God's nature and grace and how we can follow God and live out His wonderful plan and be blessed by God. Okay, let me 
Now let's move on to another passage, okay? Romans 8.33. 